Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today I'd like to talk to you about something that seems to be a bit of an obsession in Western civilization, and I want to talk about legacy. So when we think about legacy, we think of a lot of ambitious people and the mindset that they share, which is something along the lines of, what kind of mark can I leave on the world? Or maybe a little more altruistically, the thought is, how can I leave the world a better place than when I came into it? Now these are really excellent mindsets to have because the concentration here is on creating a better world for us to share with one another. And these are beautiful things. These are the things we want to see. And a common way that we reflect on this in ourselves is we all do that really creepy thing, right, where we lie down in bed and we're kind of picturing our own funeral and you're, you're imagining this and you're watching. It's totally unrealistic, but everyone you care about is in attendance at your funeral and you're sitting there and you're listening to eulogies. These imaginary eulogies in which people are talking about, who were you? What kind of impact did you make? How will you be remembered? When it comes to this, what I want people to keep in mind is that we need to distance ourselves a little bit. There are two things that I think everyone needs to be reminded of. And the first one is that nobody is remembered forever. Everyone will be forgotten. And the second one, is that living well does not require living big. So for the first of those points I made, I would like you all in the audience to call to mind somebody who has made a profound impact on your life, your life personally. Now the English street artist named Banksy once said, I mean, they say you die twice. One time when you stop breathing, and a second time a bit later on, when your name is said for the last time. In the Western world, and in much of the world, we've more or less come to terms with this sort of first death. We all acknowledge the fact that one day we will die. However, it seems quite prevalent, particularly here in America, that this second death is something we haven't quite accepted the same way. We have this propensity and this desire to achieve some form of immortality, to leave our name on something that will outlive us in one way or another. And so I'm here to try to shake that mindset a little bit today, and I don't mean this in a negative way at all. I don't want anybody to feel down about this. Just accept that death is a part of life. So when you're thinking about the people who have made a profound impact on your life, think about what will happen when they're gone, or perhaps they are gone already. The impact that they had on your life has more to do with their actions than their name. And what I mean by this is when everyone loses those who are close to them, their impact lives on through us, and through others in the way that we interact and make connections with other people. More so than in a way that your name might be attached to a foundation or money that you've donated or, or a program you've begun, it's how did you treat people when you were alive? And so when I talk about this kind of thing, I get a lot of pushback. People say, well, Connor, what about someone in the history books like George Washington? No one's gonna forget George Washington. No one's gonna forget his name. And I say, okay, well, let's think about this for a minute. Scientists estimate that life has been on Earth for about three and a half billion years. And in those three and a half billion years, human history has been around for 5,000. Written human history has existed for 5,000 years. And George Washington passed away 225 years ago. So once again, in the audience, I want you to think. Try to picture 225 years in the future. Will humanity even be here? And if we are, what will we look like? And what will George Washington's relevance be in 225 years? And I'm not trying to discredit George Washington for being the great historical figure he is. Clearly, his impact is lasting and transcendent in some ways. However, it's not his historical context that will be living on forever. If you can picture it in 225 years, try 5,000. But the point I'm trying to make is on a long enough timeline, your name is no longer immortal. But the more important point of the two I think I was trying to make is that living well does not require living big. So I want you to keep those same people in mind who you were thinking of, who made a profound impact on you, and I'm gonna tell you a story about someone who made an impact on mine. This is my great grandfather, Lincoln Little. Link, as his friends called him, or I called him Dada. Now Dada came to America from the Caribbean in 1944. He came and worked as a truck driver and eventually became a builder. And as a builder, he would build the homes for hundreds of people and hundreds of families who he would never meet or know on a personal level. Now, he worked for the city of Wethersfield, Connecticut for 30 years. 
And time and time again over his career, he was passed up for the promotion he deserved to head building official of the town. And that had a lot to do with the racist politics of the city. They didn't want to see a black man as their head building official. So he was passed up routinely by people who were less qualified than him. Now he retired in 1998, but he went on living his life as he always had, and he went out golfing every weekend well into his 90s. And he passed away five years ago, and I remember going to see him shortly before he passed. In fact, he was in hospice care, and I went to visit him about two days before he passed away, and he looked at me and he said in his very thick Jamaican accent, he said, what a beautiful life we get to live. What a beautiful life we get to live. And I thought about this, and I thought, here's a man who was in part mistreated for much of his life, or treated unfairly in some capacity. And here he is on his deathbed, and he's reflecting happily. And he would go, and he would eventually pass on quietly, like all of us will one day. So now keeping this in mind, our theme at TEDx Bryant this year is keys to the future. And so without being too cliche up here, I just want to remind everybody that while thinking big is great, thinking big is very important, being mindful of the small things is absolutely critical to the way we interact with one another. Think about the people that you had impact your life. When I asked you to come up with somebody, I did not specify that this person had to be a friend, they had to be family, even that they had to be someone close to you. Perhaps it could have been a stranger who built the home for you and your family to make memories in. You see, it's these little anonymous impacts that we tend to forget about and we, we don't really appreciate, and not just in others, but by ourselves. Things that we have an impact on in other people's lives that we are so quick to discredit because our name is not attached to them. But these are the little things that we don't think about enough. We sometimes get preoccupied. So my call to action here today is, the next time that you're feeling this, this burden, that you need to leave a mark, you need your name to live on through the years, and you need to have something attached to you that will solidify your memory for generations to come, just remember that sometimes it's the things that you specifically will not be remembered for that will be your eventual legacy. Thank you.